No, Karen. Sherry here? Sherry? Yeah, there you are. Uh, Lily's here. Charles is not here yet. Othello is not here yet. Trina, 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 there you are. Liz is here. Okay, so uh, last class, just as a real quick review, last class we talked a lot about charting. Uh, we talked about some workbook management things. We uh, added some columns. We moved some stuff around. Uh, we talked, uh, uh, we, we, we did some things with uh, a little bit of formulas, uh, you know, to link cells uh, between worksheets. Uh, tonight, uh, last class we talked about tonight, uh, going into some more formulas uh, on our schedule. It talks about uh, more formulas tonight. And uh, the best way to do this is to actually follow the book uh, in Chapter 7. Uh, so if you have your... A personal worksheet open that we've been building. Go ahead and close it, uh, and uh, we're going to go ahead and, and open up a blank uh, worksheet uh, by going to the Start button uh, and uh, opening up Excel uh, just with uh, just with the regular Start button uh, should be right there for you. Okay, so open up Excel uh, should be right there on. You can either do it that way or run this little live file right there. Okay, so and then check uh, where it says uh, uh, blank worksheet uh, right up the top there. Blank worksheet. Uh, and we're just going to open up a blank worksheet. Uh, so uh, if we turn uh, if we turn to page, uh, there's a little bit of idea here uh, in the little thing here. It talks about using the practice files. And you can read that later if you want. Uh, I'd like everybody to turn to page 126. Uh, that talks about uh, formulas with multiple operators. Uh, so I'm just going to read this little paragraph to you, and then we're going to do an exercise. Uh, formulas can contain several values, such as 81 and 3.5. Cell references, such as uh, B5 and C1 colon D11. Remember, uh, if you have a cell, C1, followed by a colon, and then another cell, like D11, that indicates that it's a range of cells. It would be like going to cell a C1 and holding your mouse down and moving it down to D11 and selecting that whole uh, area. That's what that means, having that colon in the middle. Uh, you can have operators such as the little uh, asterisk sign, which is multiplication, uh, and the plus sign, which is addition, 126. Yeah. Uh, uh, and functions such as sum and average, which we uh, have already played around with. Uh, when several operations and functions are combined into a single formula, Excel performs the operations in a predetermined order. Okay? When a formula contains several operators with the same precedence, Excel calculates the formulas from left to right. So in other words, if it's all addition or it's all subtraction, uh, then it goes from left to right. Okay. Uh, however, uh, uh, ex uh, change the order by enclosing the parts of the formulator. formula Excel needs to calculate first in parentheses. Uh, table 7.1, uh, order in which Excel performs operations of formulas, is a good reference for how to structure formulas uh, with uh, multiple uh, operations. So down here uh, on uh, uh, order of operations. So uh, it's basically the same kind of thing uh, that uh, that is in regular math. So it's you know anything that's in the parentheses it'll do first. Uh, anything with some sort of a reference operator uh, it'll do next. Then percentages, uh, then exponents, then multiplication and division, uh, addition and subtraction, and then comparison like greater than or equals to uh, or things like that. So. Over in the exercise on the right-hand side of the page, uh, there's a little exercise up there, and it says uh, exercise file. There's none. It's just a blank workbook. Uh, in cell A1, we're going to enter the following formula. Yes, ma'am. 
Well, let's let's fix, I on fix that up. Oh no! Uh, no no! Uh, it's, uh, go ahead and close that and close Word. No, that's right. Come down here. I'm going to stop. Because you're trying to open up a file the other way, and I just want a blank worksheet. No, you're fine. That's how do we learn? Okay, so. Uh, in cell A1, enter the following uh, formula. So it's equals, and then the open parentheses, 20 plus 5, close parentheses. Okay. And then the little slash, and then a parentheses, 10 minus 5, and then the close parentheses. Okay. Okay. And then move over to cell A2 by using the tab key. So the tab key will move you over to cell A2, or down, I'm sorry, down to A2, and then enter the following formula. Equals 20 plus 5 divided by 10 minus 5, without any parentheses. Okay, so equals 20 plus 5, and then the little divide sign, 10 minus 5. Okay, so you're going to put for you. Okay, so you actually want to go down one. Okay. So now enter the second one without any analysis. So when you go to the next one, does it go away and go up into the top thing? I'm sorry, say that again, please. When you go to A2, does it go away? Okay, I'm missing a point. Oh, so I have to disappears, it doesn't, okay? The formula is still so stored in cell A1. Remember that when you put in a formula, you're not going to see the formula, you're going to see the result of the formula. Open up Excel and get to a blank worksheet. Oh, okay, because it's divided by... And then you hit enter and the Or enter, hit enter. Okay. So I, I want you to notice, okay? Okay, look up. I'll, I'll, I'll do it up here on the board too. So let's look at this up here on the board for just a minute, okay? So in, in this one, okay, uh, we we actually, what Excel is doing is it's looking at this formula and saying, okay, because there's parentheses here, I'm going to do the addition first, okay? Whatever's inside the parentheses, I'm going to do first, okay? 
So that's 25, okay? It looks over here and it says, okay, well, 10 minus 5 is 5, and then I'm going to divide the 2. 25 divided by 5 is 5. Okay, now, down here, it goes through orders of operations. So it looks at this and says, well, there isn't any parentheses, so the very first thing I'm going to do is divide 5 by 10, because that's the first thing I do in order of operations if there's no parentheses. 5 divided by 10 is 1 half or 0.5, okay? Now it goes through and does the addition and subtraction from left to right. So now it says 20 plus 0.5 minus 5 is 20.5 20, 20 minus 5, which is 15.5, okay? Exactly the same numbers, okay? But the difference is the parentheses, okay? Really, really important to understand when we're talking about formulas that if you want something done first, always put it in parentheses, okay? That's the easiest thing to remember. If you want something done first, put it in parentheses so that Excel will recognize that. But before I do anything else, I want to do what's inside the parentheses, okay? So that's a really, really important thing. Uh, what, you know, just understanding basics uh, about formulas, okay? All right, so let's turn over to page, the next page, uh, and it gives us some uh, new functions uh, that are in Excel 2013 and 2016. When we went from 2013 to 2016, uh, they did not, add, they added two functions uh, that, uh, that really were just modified old functions. So uh, this is a current list of new functions uh, for uh, Excel 2013. A lot of the things are for uh, advanced mathematics, uh, trigonometry and things like that. Uh, there's also some uh, uh, informational things like uh, down on the S's there's a sheet function uh, it returns the sheet number of a reference sheet uh, that has to do with uh, when we talk in, in the advanced class when we start talking about uh, 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 editing macros. So uh, if let's turn to page 129, okay? So here's where we're going to open up our first uh, practice file. Uh, so we're going to go to uh, File up in our menu. We're going to go to File. And we're going to go to open, and we're going to go to browse, okay? When the little browse box opens up, uh, we're going to go to desktop, okay? So file open, and then you're going to go to browse. Oh, it's still thinking. I'm sorry. Yours is still thinking. And then you're going to go to Excel 2013. I'll catch you up. Uh, so double click on Excel 2013 and go to Double click on practice, and we want to go to uh, down where it says sales 7-1, sales 7-1. They're in alphabetical order, okay, so uh, sales 7-1. Well, yours is really thinking there, sir. There we go. Okay, so a desktop over there, yeah, Excel 2013, double click there.
right back. from there tomorrow? So does any, anybody else other than these two are, is yours working too? Not working? Uh, 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 What's the same show? My computer. You know what? It's not on our cell? Oh, let me try it. So, I'll put it back in. Did it turn off? Yeah, it just did. It did not need to walk away. It was like the color of the It was a flap. Still, I don't know. I came up either. I did it. I stayed for twice that day. Wow. Wow, this deal is going to be big bucks. Yeah, I saw 
Mark Shorty Hamilton wanted to get out of jail, didn't he? Oh, yeah. So did you? Mm -hmm. If I'm in the show, it could be a few million. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. Somebody's Honestly, coming. I didn't do it. <laughs> 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 She's not <laughs> coming. We'll fix it. Yeah. I tried to escape. No, I'm sorry. In one place, you shouldn't have to go. I was going to do that, but then I didn't know for sure. You know what the safest place in the world is? As far as what it goes? It's a casino. They have the eyes in the sky. Mm -hmm. I mean, once this is used, they'll break in. They'll be able to do that. Nobody will touch it because you are on camera constantly. Okay, yeah. Because they're afraid of you. For some reason, it's restarting. That's okay. And if you're not going to show them, she'll work there. She's going to come in on Sunday and move us. You know, she knows about five minutes. 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 So one of the customers that she did. Because that's a horrible thing to do. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this is talking about inserting and editing a function. Okay. Uh, we've talked about this a little bit, uh, but we're going to talk about it in a little bit different way. Uh, the functions that we've entered so far, uh, I've told you what to type, or I've showed you what to type, uh, and uh, this time we're going to uh, use uh, a function dialog box uh, that helps us to choose uh, a function that uh, that we want to do. So, uh, to uh, in uh, in the file, uh, we're going to use the insert function dialog box to insert the average function in cell B13 and find the average of the net income values of B11 through G11. Okay, we're also going to use the date and time button. Uh, in the function library group on the ribbon to insert the today function uh, in cell A1. And, and that's, that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to talk about that uh, here in just a second. So uh, the, the, to insert uh, using the uh, insert uh, uh, function dialog box, okay, uh, so the first thing we want to do is we want to select uh, the range that we're going to use, uh, be working with. So uh, we're going to select from uh, uh, B11 to G11. So B11 through G11. Okay. So that's what we're going to be working with. Uh, and uh, we're going to insert a function uh, in cell B13. I wanted to select that just so that we know uh, when it comes time to select uh, the range that that's the range that we're going to be doing uh, this to. So now go down to where, uh, go down and select cell B13. Oops, sorry. Uh, up, up near your formula bar, you're going to see the little, it looks like an F with a little X next to it, right next to the check mark. Okay, up in your formula bar. This is our formula bar right up here. And so we wrote F with the X right there. Yep. So we're going to click on that. And it's going to open up a dialog box for us. Okay. Uh, so now this is the insert function dialog box. Uh, let me bring it up so I can have it on the board here. Uh, the insert function dialog box uh, allows you to uh, select functions or search for both functions uh, based on uh, uh, you know what you're looking for, so uh, we could either type in uh, the word average uh, where the search for function is, or uh, we could select from a list uh, of recently used functions. Now, if you look up at the screen, your recently used uh, functions are different than my recently used functions uh, because I use different functions than you do. Okay, uh, so a, a lot of times. Uh, you, you, we can't rely on that search or most recently used. However, you can bring down the little uh, list next to the most recently used, uh, and you could look at all of the functions. You could look at financial functions, date and time functions, math and trig functions, all these different functions that we want to be able to use. Uh, now, uh, before I, uh, I'm going to click on all. Okay, so. Uh, everybody click on all, okay? 
Okay, and we're going to go through that list until we find the one that's called average. So A V. I don't have all. You, you have all just uh, in the little boxes right next to there when you talk about the arrow. Yep, so we're in that bottom little box, and we're going to click on <coughs> average uh, and then uh, click OK. Average, and then we're going to click OK. Now another box opens up. Okay. Uh, now in this particular case, uh, this is the box that tells us uh, what the function is. Okay, uh, and it, and and it, it allows us to enter the uh, arguments. Remember that arguments are uh, what we're going to do the function, or what we're going to do the function to. Okay. Uh, you'll notice that there's a little uh, where, where the box and the little nut where it says number one, okay? Uh, notice that there's a little box with a red arrow in it, okay? That's called the dialog box collapse button. It's called a collapse button. And I want you to press that, okay? So now the little bo dialog box has gotten smaller, okay? And it's asking us to put in a range of numbers or a number uh, for that. So now we're going to go back up and we're going to select the range B11 to G11. B11, right, right, no, no. Select with your mouse. Okay. B11 through G11. Okay. And notice that when we do that, um, you know, that. Uh, Right up, right there. See? And now it puts it in the little box for us. Okay? So, G11, click and hold, and drag over to G11. There you go. And it puts it in the little box. And then it okay. says function arguments in the top. Yes, it says function arguments in the top. Now, click on that same little box that has the red arrow in it. It went away. No, it didn't. Box with red arrow. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, yep. Box with little red arrow. I was looking for the thing. No, that's okay. But it came back. And it comes back. Your, your dialogue box comes back. Okay. What's that? 255 in there. Uh, uh, yeah, you can have up to 255 numeric arguments with this. Uh, but we're not going to right now. Uh, you know, we're, we're just going to. Now you'll also notice right above uh, or somewhere in your box, it gives you a formula result, okay? Uh, most of us will be right above the cancel button. Uh, some of us will be uh, on the other side, okay? Uh, but the result should be 2,103. 2,103, you see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's okay to have a bunch of Oh, oh no. Um, um, If you're, if you're at 2,103, hit OK. Okay? That's definitely yep. been up there, so we're OK. Right, yeah. Okay, and you'll notice that when you do, it inserts the function uh, into your worksheet. If you look up at your formula bar, okay, there's the function. Equals, average, because remember all functions and all formulas start with the equal sign, okay? Oh, you need to click OK. And need to click OK. Okay, uh, and then you have the parentheses, uh, or the, the range, you know, B11 through G11, uh, and then the closed parentheses, okay? Uh, and that, all that is telling you is, is that 
we're taking an average of all the numbers that are in the range of B11 through G11. Okay? If we change those numbers, the average would change, right? Okay? Uh, and that's the wonder of Excel. Now, the second part uh, of our uh, exercise in here is we're going to use the date and time button in the function library group on the ribbon tab to insert the, insert the today function in cell A1. So go to cell A1. Okay. Uh, on your ribbon, you'll notice there's a formula tab. There's a formula tab. Let me catch up with everybody here just one sec. Click on the formula tab of your uh, of your uh, button there. Okay, yep. And then you're going to see a thing that says date and time. Okay, in the function library group. Okay, there's the date and time. We're just going to click on that little arrow, and then we're down at the very bottom or close to the bottom. You might have to scroll down a little bit. You're going to see a today function. Okay, and just click on the today function. Oops, I'm in the wrong box. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> that was not funny. Okay. Now you'll notice that when you do, oh, oh, oh sorry. Okay. You'll notice that when you do, no, you, oh, oh, okay. Cancel. Okay. Okay. And now you'll notice that a little dialog box pops up that says returns the current date formatted as a date. This function takes no arguments. Okay, in other words, you can't say today is today. I mean, it, it doesn't matter what cell you're in. It doesn't matter anything other than today is today. Uh, so, and you'll also notice that the result of the formula is volatile. Okay, in other words, uh, if you open up your worksheet tomorrow, the today function will display tomorrow's date. So it's not it's not constant, okay? Uh, so now press OK on your little dialog box there, and you'll notice that when you do that in your uh, cell A1 is now uh, today's date. Uh, format is the date 11 to uh, 2016 is I believe uh, what is, is, is displayed there. Now let me catch up to you here, okay? <clears throat> So there's a couple of different ways that we can uh, insert functions into a cell. Uh, we can use the uh, function dialog box, which we bring up by hitting the little F X uh, that is near your formula bar. Okay, uh, that brings up your function dialog box, and you can search uh, for different functions uh, using that function dialog box. Or uh, you can go to the uh, uh, formula tab on your ribbon and you have a formula library that's uh, broken up into different types of functions. So you have date and time functions, you have math functions, you have information functions, you have lookup functions, you have all these different kinds of, of functions uh, and you can go through and search <clears throat> each one of those little uh, different types of, uh, of thing. Uh, when I'm using Excel, uh, again, because I'm 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 a master at Excel. I've, it's just I've I've used it so much I know what I'm looking for. Okay. Uh, however, when I started out, uh, my best friend was the function dialog box. Okay. Uh, I could search for what I was looking for. Uh, I could uh, you know type in some words uh, that I kind of I kind of knew what I wanted to do. Uh, you know, like I could type in date. Uh, and it would bring up some, some, you know, the today function or the now function or all these things that dealt with dates. Uh, you know, so uh, the function dialog box was my best friend uh, when I was first starting out because I didn't know uh, anything. Uh, you know, and, and so I, I just searched for them and I, I, I hoped that I picked the right one. Uh, sometimes I did and sometimes I didn't. Uh, the ones that I didn't, I learned more about uh, than when I did, uh, because it was a mistake, and I was like, what did I just do? You know, so, uh, you know that sometimes our mistakes teach us the most. Uh, uh, but, uh, uh, so that's one way, the function dialog box. Again, the, the formula tab uh, is a really nice place if you're just uh, browsing. Uh, you know, if you're 
if you're thinking about, well, is there something that's pre-built uh, for me to do, uh, and, and can I do it this way, okay? Uh, so let's turn the page here. Uh, that was our, uh, and again, uh, down on t uh, page 130, uh, there's a table uh, that talks about the uh, different types of uh, function categories. Uh, you know, the, the statistical, there's math and trig, uh, database functions. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the logical functions uh, and a little bit about lookup and reference functions. Uh, so I'd like to go over to page 131. Now notice uh, that even though the, the exercise up on the top says to open file sales-2, we don't need to because this is progressive. We've already done exercise uh, one, uh, so if we were to open up the other file, all, it would, all you would see is the file that we currently have on our screen. Uh, so you really, if you're going to go through them one after the other, you do not have to open up the same the file here. We can just use the same one that we're, we're doing on. Uh, so our exercise is going to be uh, selecting cell range B9 through G9 and look at the status bar to see the average monthly expenses. Uh, and then we're going to select the manual calculation op option and enter a certain number into cell B3 and notice that no other values change. Uh, we're then going to click the Calculate Now button and watch the worksheet formulas calculate new values, and then we're going to change back to automatic calculation. So when you, uh, this is kind of uh, an interesting subject. Uh, uh, Excel, uh, every time you move your active cell, uh, believe it or not, Excel calculates the entire workbook. Okay, so any functions or any formulas or any uh, dates or times or anything like that that you have in your workbook, uh, Excel recalculates all that. And for small workbooks like this, where you only have one or two or three sheets, it's not a big deal. Okay, uh, it takes about a nanosecond, and it happens so fast that your eye cannot really even see uh, what what is going on. It, it just happens that fast. However. I worked at Home Depot where they had a worksheet sheet that was extremely huge. Uh, it had uh, it had inventory numbers for about five to I think it was five to seven years depending upon your market. Uh, I had inventory numbers for five to seven years for every single item that was in the store, past and present. Okay, uh, it 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 ranged for anywhere between uh, two hundred thousand rows. Uh, and several sheet or screens worth of columns uh, going one way or the other. It was just this huge, huge uh, 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 worksheet. And it had literally thousands of formulas in there that was calculating uh, 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 you know, profit and loss and, and all these different calculations. When you moved your uh, current uh, active cell from one cell to another, when you have automatic calculation on, literally it took about seven or eight seconds for the, the worksheet to recalculate all of the different formulas, and then it would move the cell. So you, you, you'd hit the arrow button to move the cell, or the enter key, or the tab button, and you'd have to sit there and wait for like five or seven seconds for it to, to actually move. Okay, uh, So it, it was just such a huge worksheet. Well. Excel fixed this problem in 2000, between 2003 and 2007. Uh, uh, they fixed this problem by adding a way that we can uh, turn off uh, the automatic calculation. So uh, the very first thing I'd like you to do is uh, select the uh, range B9 through G9. B9 through G9. Okay. We're going to select. Uh, B9 through G9. Okay, now I want you to notice down on the bottom left hand or right hand side of your screen that there are uh, several different numbers uh, down way down on the bottom, uh, like right above the taskbar. You're going to see something that says average 14322. You're going to have a count of six, and you're going to have a sum of uh, 85,930, okay? Uh, this was an added feature in Excel 
uh, that gives you, when you select a range of cells, it gives you the average, uh, the sum, if there's any numbers in there, uh, and a, a count of how many cells you've selected. Uh, so, this, so this is just kind of a quick uh, thing. Uh, if you don't want to put an average or, or a sum in, uh, you can select some cells and say, how much is this adding to uh, by looking down at the bottom right-hand corner. So that's nice. Okay. Uh, now what we want to do, uh, we should still be on our uh, formula <coughs> tab uh, of our worksheet here. And I'd like to move up in the upper right-hand corner. You should see something that says Calculation Options. And we're going to click on that. And I want to go to Manual. Calculation Options. And we want to make that manual. Did everybody see that? Everybody, everybody clicked on manual. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now let's go to cell number uh, uh, B3. B3. Okay. And I want you to change that to 12,000. <clears> okay. <throat> uh, you can either use the check mark or the enter key to, to enter that number in there. Now I still want you to notice that the total that's down in cell number uh, B9 uh, did not change, okay? It's still 11,700, even though we changed cell B3 from 14,000 to 12,000, okay? Because our calculation is on manual, okay? We haven't, we, it, we haven't allowed uh, Excel to calculate the worksheet because we told it no, we want to do it ourselves. Okay? So everybody go up to the upper right hand corner of your ribbon and there should be a button that says calculate now. Hold on for one second here. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I referenced the wrong cell. Okay, so look at uh, cell B11 is what we should be looking at. Uh, it was started out at 2300. When we click, click Calculate Now, it goes to 300. I apologize. I thought, I, I thought we were looking at the 11,300. So I go back up to cell B3. Let's, let's make sure we're looking at the right cell. Change that back to 14,000. Just type right over. Type right over. That's the wonder of Excel. And you don't have to put the column in. It would be an hour you have to see. Go back up. Go back up. Go back up. Go back up and watch your book. So let's change it back to 12,000, because that's where we really want to be, 12,000. And then go ahead and hit Calculate Now again. That should now be 300 in there. 
Okay, so now let's hit our calculate options or calculation options and change it back to automatic. Let's change it back to automatic. Uh, so let's move over to page 133. We're going to talk about a, uh, a little bit of a confusing concept. <clears throat> so, um, can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. Uh, if you uncheck the, uh, the default, which is the automatic, yes. you use manual. Use the manual. And you forget which one you check. And you're looking at your numbers and you're constituting on your spreadsheet. Not your right. Some easy way to know which option you're on? The only way to know is to <laughs> check your calculation options. Yeah. Okay. There is not an easy way to know. Okay. And that's why I always say that unless you absolutely have to change it to manual, leave it on manual. Leave it on manual. Okay. Yeah. It's just that unless you have to change it to, to manual for some strange reason. Okay. So do you use the annual? Yourself? Rarely. Okay. Uh, uh, the only time that I've used it is. Uh, I, I was working on a, uh, I have to admit, you know, reference SkyWest. I've been doing a lot of work for them. I was working on a SkyWest uh, a thing, and, and I didn't want the fields to calculate because I was looking for a very specific number in a very specific place. Had I had the calculation on automatic, uh, I was doing some things that would have changed that number. Uh, so I was always looking for that same number, so I went to manual. Uh, and then when I needed to, I would recalculate and see if what I had done affected that number. Okay. So there, there are specific times when you need to do that, but as soon as I was done, I put it back on that. So, so yeah, that's that's a really important important point. Okay. Uh, so now we're going to talk about what are called names. Okay. Uh, remember back in the very beginning of our uh, class. Uh, we talked about uh, the name box uh, up in the upper left hand corner by the uh, uh, um, formula bar. Okay, there's the, the little check mark and then to the left of that uh, is a name box and normally in the name box uh, there is the current cell. So if you look up on the screen in my name box, because I am in cell B4, uh, it's that's that's where the name of the cell uh, where I'm at right now. Uh, however, uh, I'm going to select cell uh, B3. Okay, and when I do, uh, you'll notice that in my name box, that cell B3 is named Jan Income. Okay, Jan Income uh, is the name of the cell B3. Okay. So, why is this important? Well, uh, sometimes uh, we can uh, um, uh, we can define a name and then we can use it uh, in a formula instead of uh, instead of saying uh, equals b three times something or equals uh, b three times or divided by something. We could say uh, equals Jan income uh, times three. Okay, uh, and that's important because if I move the the cell B3 to someplace else, the name goes with it. Okay, uh, so if I were to happen to move that, either purposely or accidentally, I wouldn't have to change any of the formulas that reference that cell because I'm now using a name uh, instead of the location. Okay, uh, I know that's confusing. But uh, hopefully this exercise uh, will help us just a little bit. Uh, so we're going to create a defined n names for each of the cells, for each of these cell ranges, uh, B5 to B8, uh, C5 to C8, and D5 to D8. And we're going to name them 
Jan expenses, Feb expenses, and March expenses, respectively. Okay, so now if you'll look up at the screen, I'm going to do the first one, uh, and uh, and we'll, well, then we'll do it together, okay? So uh, here I am, I'm going to select uh, B5 through B8. <clears throat> then in my formula tab, uh, on my... Uh, uh, on the formula tab in the defined names group, I'm going to go up and I'm going to click on the define name box, okay? And I'm going to name this uh, Jan Expenses, J-A-N-E-X-P-E-N, uh, Jan Expense, Expense or Expenses. Expenses, E E X P E N S E S. Okay. And then I'm going to click OK. You'll notice in this little box up here uh, that it tells me where, what it refers to, uh, what it is, and if I wanted to, I could add a comment uh, to this little range up here. Uh, and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to click OK. Okay, and now you'll notice that when I select this range, that it's up here in my name box is Jan Expenses. Okay? Okay, so we're going to do the same thing now with February and March. So we're going to select C5 through C8. Okay, so uh, if you were watching me uh, and you did not do B5 through B8 first, let's catch you up there. Did you, Sherry, did you do that? Yeah. Okay, good. You're okay, good. Okay. Well, I did it. I don't see where it says. Okay. So now do the same thing to February C5 through C8 and call it Feb expenses. Okay. Uh, now uh, can't have any spaces. Okay. Can't have any periods. Oh. So both. J A N E. Yeah. So in names, you cannot have any spaces, and you can't have any special characters which would be considered like plus signs, minus signs, periods, dashes, anything like that. It has to be all one word. Okay, so select B5 through B8. Okay, go up and uh, say define name. Yeah, that's okay. Type in Jan Expense. Is J -A -N -E -X -P no space. Can't have any space. S on the 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 Let me, let me catch up here. Okay, so now I'd like everybody to go to cell K1, K1, okay, 
Now using your name box, okay, pull down the little arrow that's in your name box. No, it, 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 the name box is over there. That's your name box. Okay. Now pull down the little arrow and select Jan Expenses. And I notice that this is now a quick way to get someplace. Okay, that's another advantage of a named range or a named uh, uh, box or a, a, you know some sort of a name. Uh, if you're somewhere on your your worksheet and you want to go someplace, okay, you can use your name box to get there quickly if you have defined names uh, in your uh, in your worksheet, okay. Okay, so uh, there's some other things with names. We're going to do a little bit more about names uh, when we get into our advanced class. Uh, but uh, I do want to point out that we can, in, in the next exercise on page uh, 135, our exercise is to edit the defined names in the name manager dialog box so they read Jane, Feb, and Mar instead of Jane expenses, Feb expenses, and Mar expenses. Okay, so now, uh, here's how we're going to do this, okay? Uh, so we're going to go up to the same area, that defined names group of the formula bar or formula tab, and we're going to open the name manager, okay? And you'll notice that we have four names in there or however many names that you put in, uh, it's, you know, it depends on, on what you've done. So. Now we're going to click on the very top one should be Feb Expenses and we're going to click the Edit button, okay? So instead of just, uh, instead of Feb Expenses, it's just going to say Feb, just Feb, okay? And then we're going to click OK and then we're going to do the same thing for the Jan Expenses, so it's just Jan, okay? And we're going to do the same thing for the MAR expenses, so that it's just MAR, M-A-R. Okay. Yeah, we're changing the JAN expenses to JAN by selecting it and then pressing the edit button. So we got Feb, February, January, January. Okay, hold on. Oh, we're changing names. So notice how it's all highlighted right now. So take it and put it back on. Just go to the back. 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 Now our next exercise, in the, or our next uh, part of this exercise, uh, is we're going to go into cell uh, B14, uh, and we're going to enter a formula in there that averages the expenses for January, February, and March. Okay, so here's how we're going to do that, and we're going to oh, we're going to close our dialog box. I'm sorry, close our dialog box. Okay, now go to cell B14. B14. And we're going to put in equals average, equals average. Now notice when I start typing average, equals average, a little dialog box comes up that gives you different options about average, okay? So you can do one of two things. You can continue to type the word average, or you can click on the word average, uh, I'm sorry, double click it, uh, and it starts the, it, it starts the thing. So now, we're going to put in a Jan, uh, once we get the little uh, average, and then number one is going to be Jan, J-A-N, 
And you notice that when we start typing the word Jan, uh, a little thing comes up that says Jan or Jan income. We want just Jan. Okay. So it's average and then you just put Jan? Nope. Uh, double, double click on those word patterns there. Now type in the word Jan. Now, now look what's happening when you do. Okay. So now just double click that where it says Jan. Okay. Now put a comma. Okay. Now put a comma. After Jan, put a comma. Start typing the word Feb. Double click that there where it says your parentheses. Okay. No, that's okay. Uh, so the only thing we forgot to do is to come up here to your formula bar. This is your formula bar. Okay. Click right after where it says Feb. Then comma. And then mark. No space. No okay. space there. Okay. Actually, that's a period instead of a When you got them all, notice that uh, as you're typing the different words, uh, that they uh, that the height the area is highlighted. Uh, you know, again, when we're when we're using ranges in a formula, the area that we're using uh, uh, highlights. Uh, let me show you up here on the board for those of you uh, who are not uh, who are behind me here. Um, what's that? Should, yeah. Okay. <laughs> let, let me see. Yep, 3208. Okay. Okay, right Because it was expecting another number, and when you didn't provide one, it added a zero. Okay. So that zero brought your average down. Is what it was doing. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, when when that uh, 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 when you're doing names, or actually when you're doing any formula, uh, when you're on your last argument, just close your parentheses, and then press your enter button or however you want to do that. Now. Uh, I want to uh, I want to jump off topic for just one second here. One second. Here. Okay. I want to jump off topic for just a second because I did something on my screen that I I, uh, I normally do in everyday life, and I don't think we've talked about this. <clears throat> I'm a big keyboard shortcut fan. Uh, you know, I'm typing. I might as well use my keyboard to do stuff for me. Uh, yeah. A lot of times. Uh, I'll, I'll put stuff into a formula, or I'll put stuff into a cell, and I'll press the enter button, or I'll press the tab key, and I move, uh, and, uh, and I look up, and, and I, I didn't get the result I wanted to get, much like you didn't get 3208, and I look up, and it's like, that can't be right. Uh, so I go back to the cell, and I notice I've made a mistake uh, in, the, uh, in the formula, or I've made a mistake somehow, okay? Uh, uh, so I need to edit the cell. Uh, well, the, the quick shortcut for that is to press the F2 key, the function 2 a key, uh, will allow you to edit uh, this whatever's in the cell. For you, it would be the F2 key. Oh, I'm sorry, go to a cell. It's a shortcut to... It's a keyboard shortcut to be able to edit uh, a cell. Okay, so I'll go back to the 3208. Okay. 
and let's try it. So F2. And now you're dead. See how that works? Okay. Uh, and if you press F2 again, okay, it takes you out of editing mode. Okay. So F2 in and should be F2. Oh, no. No. no? Oh, they finally fixed it. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> so yeah, just use your check mark. Uh, another way too, another uh, another neat uh, keyboard shortcut, if you want to enter something to a cell without moving, hold down your control key and press enter. Okay? It enters whatever you have in your cell without moving the active cell. So control enter uh, allows you to just put stuff in a cell without moving uh, your box. Okay? Uh, so if I hold down my control key and press enter, uh, it enters that into the cell without moving uh, the active cell. Okay. Sure, press control key and enter. There you go. Okay. Now remember, uh, we're looking at a result of a formula. Okay? The formula itself, you can see up in the formula bar, Okay, what's, what we're looking at in the cell is the result of the formula if you're on cell B14. Okay? In the cell it says 3208. Okay? That is the average of the expenses for January, Fe February, and March. Okay? So I just want to point out uh, that that's, uh, that's how you can, you know, a lot of people say, oh, my formula disappeared. No, it's still there. Okay. <laughs> It's just you can't see it unless you're you're looking up in the formula bar. Okay. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Do we get all that done? Yes. Uh, oh, uh, it wants us to delete the Jan income defined name. Uh, so again, let's go up to our name manager. Okay. We just we were just there a minute ago up in the defined name. We're going to go to our name manager. We're going to click on the one that says Jan income. And we're just going to hit delete. It's going to ask us, are you sure you want to delete the name Jan Income? And we're going to say OK. And then we're going to close our name manager. Okay. Close our name. Uh, oh, nope, nope, nope. Uh, cancel. I'll go to your name manager. Up in your, up in your ribbon. Up in your ribbon. Right. Now select the chain of income in your job offer. Right? Now go to the top of your thing there and just delete the top of the job offer. Or I can click the delete button. Yeah, and it will work with the delete button also, yes. Okay. And then close your, your, your main view. Okay. okay, so now let's go to our next thing here on page 137. Okay, and we're in the same file, so it doesn't matter here. Uh, so our exercise is going to be to display and then hide the formulas in a worksheet. Uh, and then we're going to select the uh, B14 and trace the precedence, and then remove the arrows. And then we're going to add B14 to the watch window, and then we're going to change cell B5 to 1000 to watch the value update uh, in the watch window, and then we're going to close the watch window. So there are a lot of things we're going to do uh, in this little exercise. So the first thing we want to do is display and then hide the formulas that are on this worksheet. Uh, sometimes uh, you, you want to see all of the formulas that are on a worksheet. Uh, you know, you, you want to make sure that, uh, that all of the cells that you want to have formulas in them have formulas in them, uh, and, and maybe instead of going to each individual cell and looking up the formula bar, you want to see them on the worksheet. Okay, So Excel has given us this opportunity uh, in the formula auditing group on the formula tab. Uh, there is a, a button that says show formulas. And we're going to go ahead and, and click that right up here on the top uh, where it says show formulas. Okay. In the uh, formula auditing group, on your ribbon, it says show formulas. Formula auditing group, show formulas. Okay. See, now when we do that, okay, you'll notice that 
along cell uh, along row nine uh, is a group of sum formulas. You'll see the formulas that we put in there in cell uh, B or 13 and 14. Okay, and then you'll also see a net income, which is uh, the B3 minus B9 and C3 minus C C9 uh, all along the the row uh, 11 uh, gives us a net income, uh, which would be the the income that's up in uh, uh, you know the third cell uh, subtracted from the total or the sum uh, that's in row nine. Okay, uh, so again, it gives us a quick way uh, to look at all the formulas uh, that are in our worksheet. Okay, uh, this is worksheet dependent. Okay, uh, so if I were to click on another worksheet, I would have to click show formulas again. Okay, it does not do the entire workbook, it only does the one worksheet. Okay, so now, to hide the formulas, we just go back up to the same place we were, and we notice that the show formulas is gray, we're going to click it again and it will turn itself off. Okay, now our worksheet is back to normal. Okay, <coughs> so again, just go up uh, to where it says show formula, uh, and uncheck it, and now, uh, now we're good. Uh, so the second part of this is uh, we want to select cell B14, okay, and then we're going to trace precedence, okay. So what is a precedent? Well, a precedent is uh, what are the things that go into making that formula, okay. So select cell B14, and then up in the same place where you had show formulas, uh, there's a a tab right next to it that says trace precedence. Trace precedence. Okay? And you'll notice that when you do, uh, three little lines come onto the screen and they're all pointing towards uh, uh, C, uh, B14. Okay? Uh, and it's saying these are the things that go into making the formula that's in cell B14. Okay? Uh, and and it's, it, you'll notice that there's a little box around the three ranges uh, that go into making uh, the average uh, that's in B14. This is handy uh, if, uh, say for instance, you accidentally added uh, a cell uh, that shouldn't be in the formula uh, and you trace precedence and this big long arrow comes from off the screen pointing to it and you're going, wait a minute, that shouldn't be there. Okay? Uh, it allows you to do what's called error checking. Okay? Uh, are the things that need to go into this formula going into the formula. So now, uh, unfortunately, uh, there's only one way to get rid of the arrows. Up in that same group, uh, you'll notice that there is a little tab that says remove arrows. So uh, we're going to click on that, okay, uh, and the little arrows uh, go away, okay. Um, the next thing we're going to do uh, is we are going to add cell B14 to the watch window. Uh, there's a watch window uh, right, ne right next to the show formulas uh, uh, little thing on the right is a little thing called a watch window and, and we're going to click on that okay and uh, down uh, down at the bottom of your your screen or somewhere on your screen should be a watch window okay uh, and uh, uh, why is mine so big? Somebody's been messing with my watch window. Um, one sec here, let me. There we go, okay. There's my watch window. Uh, so all we have to do is when the cell B14 is selected, in our little watch window, we're gonna say add watch. And it's gonna say select the cells you want to watch the value of, and it should say sheet one, uh, B14, and we're just gonna click add, okay? So in our watch window, it tells me what book the cell is in uh, what sheet the cell is on, what cell I'm looking at, what the current value of that cell is, and then whatever, if there's a formula in there, 
uh, what the formula is that's in that cell. So now I would like to go to uh, cell B5, okay? We're going to go to B5, uh, and we're going to change the value in cell B5 to 1,000, and we're going to hit Enter, okay? And, and uh, when I did, why didn't it change? Okay, change, good. Okay, and now you'll notice that in my, my watch window, it changed also. Okay, so the nice thing about a watch window is it's always on top of the sheet. So if I move to sheet three here, uh, it, or sheet two or sheet three down at the bottom, uh, my watch window is always going to be on top. Uh, so that if I change something that affects my cell that's in the watch window, uh, I can see it change. Uh, this is really handy for very complex worksheets. Uh, it's just one of those things that goes along with learning about formulas uh, and, 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 uh, uh, and functions. Uh, so now I want to delete this watch. So we're going to select the watch so that it's blue and then just delete the watch and then close our watch window one of two ways. There's a little X that you can close it, or you can go up and click on watch window uh, and it will change or it will close the watch window. Okay. Uh, let's go to page 139. We're going to talk about errors a little bit. Okay, I did not get oh. back to where it was. Can I close the watch window? I'm still on that. Oh, I'll go to sheet one. There. No, we're just going to leave that at 1,000 oh, for right now. Yep. Yep, we're going to leave that at 1,000. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, our exercise uh, is we're going to add uh, a divided by zero onto the end of the formula in cell B13. Uh, and then we're going to notice that an error appears. Uh, we're going to add something to B14. Uh, and a value error is going to come up. We've talked a little bit about errors so far, uh, but then we're going to display the error checking uh, dialog box and use the edit in formula bar button to delete uh, the stuff that we added. So everybody go to cell B14. Okay. I want you to press F2 to edit the formula. Okay. Uh, and at the end of the formula, I would like you to add plus A8, plus A8, okay, and then press enter. And you'll notice that when you do that, it turns into a hashtag value, okay, because you'll notice that in cell A8, uh, there is a word, not a value. Uh, so it's saying, hey, uh, the values don't add up because someplace there's not a value. Okay? Now go to cell B13 okay, and press F2 so that we're editing the, the value. And then we're going to put divided by the little slash, okay, the little slash, uh, divided by zero. Put a zero there. Okay? And then press enter. And you should get a divide zero, a div zero. Uh, error, okay? A div is zero error. And again, all that's saying is is that somewhere uh, something is dividing this formula by zero. We put it in there, okay? Hashtag, hashtag zero or error. Uh, normally, if it's a hashtag, then something, it's an error, yes. Okay. Um, and that could be reference. There'll be like a little hashtag reference or uh, you know other things like this, but these are the two we're talking about right now. Uh, and then now up in your uh, up in your uh, formula auditing group on the formula tab is an error checking box. Okay, uh, so we're going to click on that, uh, and uh, we're going to say trace. Oh, I'm sorry. Click on the little arrow and say trace error. Requires active so. Oh, I haven't done mine. I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me uh, let me get back to where I need to be here. 
uh, divided by 0 and uh, F2 plus A8. There we go. Now, so highlight uh, cell B14. I'll go up to error checking, and you'll notice that this little dialog box comes up uh, that says error in cell B14. A value is used in the formula and is of the wrong data type. Okay? So there's a bunch of different things that we can do here. We could get help on this error if we didn't understand what it was. We could say show the calculation steps, which would just really, uh, when you do that, it, it just, uh, unless it's a very complex formula, it it's, won't make a lot of sense. You could ignore the error. Say, you know, I really don't care. Okay? Uh, and then, but we're going to say edit in formula bar. So check the edit in formula bar. And then up in the formula bar, notice that it automatically takes you up to the formula bar. And then we're going to backspace over the plus A8. Okay? The plus A8. Okay, uh, so hit the escape button before you do anything else. So we're erasing utilities. Now, and, and when you're done getting rid of the plus A8, hit resume uh, in your little box down there. So where am I doing? Where am I? On this thing? Uh, you should be up here. I don't oh, this. Oh, I was trying to do it. No, no. Okay. Now, hit resume. Yeah, I just want to make sure that it goes to the other It goes up to the other one because you're still error checking. Okay? I don't and see the no, that's okay. Um, because you're not in the error window for some reason. So we did off. Edit in formula bar. Yeah, let's uh, Yeah, type the word utility. So here we're going to edit an error bar again, and we're going to get rid of the divided by zero thing. Okay. Uh, so first off, you need to edit the formula bar. You can go up to the back space over the 8-8. Okay. Uh -huh. Two, zero. And you can click on point guard, and you hit resume, and you will go to the next error. Oh, okay. So you're going to do the same thing. Edit in formula bar, and you fix it up in formula by getting rid of that divide zero. Okay? Good? Let me let me catch up to you here. So again, we're going to just hit, uh, we're going to fix that. Hit resume, uh, edit in formula bar, uh, fix it, and then hit resume. When we hit resume on the second time, it's going to say the error is the error check is complete for the entire sheet. You just hit OK, and everything is going to close up. Okay. Uh, on the page uh, 140. Uh, it talks about the different kinds of errors. Uh, so uh, the very top one, uh, with a bunch of hashtags, the numeric value is too wide to display within the cell. Uh, resize the column 
and you'll be able to see it. Okay, a value, uh, you know, hashtag value is a mathematical formula that references a text entry was entered instead of a numerical value or entry. A divide zero is an attempt was made to divide by the number zero. This error often occurs when creating a formula that refers to a blank cell as a divisor. Okay, so uh, you know if I'm if I'm referencing a cell and there's nothing there, it recognizes it as zero and will give me a div zero. Okay, uh, we have a, a name error which says uh, Excel doesn't recognize text entered in a formula. The name or function may have been misspelled or a deleted name was typed. Text in a formula without closing the text in double quotation marks may also have been entered that will give you a name uh, error. Uh, then we have an NA error, an NA error. This error occurs when a value is not available to a function or a formula. If certain cells on the worksheet contain data that is not yet available, enter uh, 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 NA in those cells. Formulas that refer to those cells will then return an NA instead of attempting to calculate a value. Then we have the ref, uh, the hashtag ref uh, error. The ref error value occurs when a cell reference is not valid. A cell range was probably deleted that is referenced in a formula. We have the num error. The num error value occurs when using an invalid argument in a worksheet function. So if I was trying to take an average uh, and I put the word true instead of a number, it would, it would bring back either a, a value or a number uh, reference or error. And then we have null. A specified intersection uh, of two ranges is a for, in a formula uh, do not intersect. That's actually a very rare one uh, for a null error. Okay. Uh, so our next sheet uh, comes probably one of the most powerful functions uh, ever designed in, uh, in Excel. Okay. So the first thing we want to do uh, is we want to close our current worksheet and not save it. So I go to File, File, Close. Okay, file close, and then do not save. Do not save, don't save. Okay, so now we want to open the uh, functions workbook. So go to file open, file open, okay, uh, and then uh, uh, browse. We're going to browse. We're going to go to that desktop that should be already there for you. Find a uh, file that's called functions. Functions. Okay. Functions. Yeah, it's, it's, they're all in, they're all in alphabetical order. Uh, oh, yeah, go to your Excel 2013. Double click that. Open practice. Yeah, open. When you, yep. So we have should have a worksheet that says uh, uh, North Shore Travel uh, on. North Shore Travel. So we're going to use. Uh, here's the here's the uh, uh, here's the exercise. It says determine the federal income tax. Uh, for these people and enter the R, these arguments for the if function uh, in cell B17. Uh, so the test is going to be if B14 is greater than or equal to 500, then we're going to take B14 times 0.15. If it's false, uh, we're going to take B14 times 0.1. Okay, so here's the, 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 the syntax, you might say, there's a good word. Uh, of an if statement. If you look up here on the board, okay, so we have if, if, and then we have a parenthesis because remember that when we're doing a function, we have the function name. This is the name of the function. IF. If, IF, yep. yep. If, okay. Okay, then we're going to have some sort of a test, okay, uh, something that says 
uh, if what? Well, if this, okay, so this could be like, uh, in our case, we're going to say D14 is greater than or equal to 500, okay? So if B14 is greater than or equal to 500, well, okay, if that's true, then we do what? And if it's false, we do what? So if, then we put a comma, okay, because I've, I've done my test. Okay, so now we put in a value or, fun, or, or, or formula if this is true. Okay. okay, so if B14 is true, if it is in fact greater than or equal to 500, okay, uh, then uh, I'm going to take B14 and I'm going to multiply it by 0.15. Okay, so if B14 is greater than or equal to 500, I'm going to multiply it by 0.15. However, okay, we're going to say now we have a value or formula if it's false. Okay, and in this case we're going to use B14 times 0.1. And we're going to close our parentheses. Okay, so this is a, it's called an if-then statement. Okay, so if B14 is greater than or 500, if that's true, we're going to do this. If it's not true, it's going to skip over this part, and we're going to do this. Okay? Go ahead. No, no, no I'm just, I'm trying to understand the, the why of it. Um, Sure. It says 500 in there, so it's... Right. Okay, just a sec. Okay. So, so we're going to see this uh, here because uh, we're going to put this formula in uh, to... Uh, we're going to go to... Uh, uh, where are we here? Oh, I've got to open up my uh, form. Oh, hold on. Yep, hold on. I've got to, I've got to open up my uh, uh, functions book here. Yeah, so we want to be in B17, okay? So now, so we're going to put in equals if, open parentheses, okay? B14 greater than or equal to 500, okay? The little greater than sign is above the period, okay, on your keyboard. Uh, yeah, greater than, and then the equal, and then 500, and then comma, okay, so that says, okay, uh, 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 yeah, comma, okay, uh, oh, you forgot the if part, Now we're going to type B14 and then times the little yeah. asterisk thing, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, okay? And then we're going to put another comma. Oh, um, we're going to press F2, but go back. This should be B14, not B14. Now put a comma after the 0.15, okay, and then B14, okay, B14 times 0.1, and then close your parentheses. Times what? 0.1? 0.1, yeah. And then hold down your control key. Oh, no. no, you're fine. Uh, so you forgot the comma after 500. Okay, now, 
hold down the control key and press enter. Control key, press enter. Do they have to be password letters? No. Uh, so hit so okay for just a second. Uh, so let's see what you got here. Oh, uh, you have to have point one five. No, you're not, but let's, uh, let's see what we have here. Uh, so, uh, okay, so here, okay. And your problem is right back here. Okay, so, okay, so, okay, so that should be a B14 is greater than or equal to. So type in B14 right there. Right before the Right before the greater sign. Okay. Now, right after the greater sign, type in the Okay, so now everybody should have 75 there, right? Okay? No. Okay, let me finish this up on my side so we can see it up on the thing here. So uh, I'm going to put in a comma and then uh, B14 times uh, 0.15 and comma and B14, oops, times 0.1 and close my thing and control enter. Okay. Now, uh, we're, since we've entered that, and remember, we did not use any absolute referencing. We used, uh, uh, what, remember we talked a little bit about absolute and relative referencing last time. Uh, we didn't add any little dollar signs, so it's going to, as we move and copy that formula, 
it's going to change the, the addresses in there, right? Okay. Uh, so uh, I want to grab the little, uh, remember we're going to use that little box that's down the bottom right hand corner of our active cell. Okay. So we're going to use our mouse. Okay. I'm going to move it to our changes right there. So this will see that little box right down there. Okay, so move your mouse to up just on top of that little box. All the way across? The little, the little box in the very corner. Right here. That, that little key thing, see how it changes to the box? Click when it's like that, and I'm going to drag it down there all the way over to each. This is not going to be Just hold and drag. Yeah, very good, very good, very good. Can I get to where? Uh, over to column H all the way over to column H, okay? Okay, so now here, I wanna, I wanna look and point out a couple of things. Okay, so now uh, we'll notice that uh, in, in column C, where the uh, 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 14, the, the cell 14 of the gross pay is $375, oh, it didn't work. Oh, uh, you didn't click on the actual little box here. It's got to change in that black. Oh, that was plus sign and then all around. So notice that in, in uh, Brian Kipp's column, since he only made $375, his federal income tax is only $37.50, which is uh, 375 times 0.1, right? Okay, so his, for him, this is false. Okay, it's not greater than or equal to 500, it's less than. So it skipped over this part and said, okay, I'm gonna do this because this is false. This is false, so I'm gonna do this, okay? In, uh, in, uh, uh, Bernice Young's case, okay, over in column uh, F, okay, this is true, okay. So it said, yep, I'm gonna I'm gonna take more out of her paycheck uh, because she made more money than you know the $500 limit, okay. You might say, okay. So can you see how powerful of a formula this can be, okay? It's giving you choices. Uh, to to do stuff. Uh, in our advanced class, uh, we're going to talk about how you can do what's called nesting, okay? Where you say, okay, well, if this is true, do this. If it's false, do another if statement, okay? And and you, it's called nesting uh, if statements. Uh, I've had one that's had, believe it or not, get this. 20 uh, different if statements uh, going through. Uh, and, and it had to do with commissions. Uh, it's a great way uh, to calculate commissions uh, based on sales figures. Uh, and, and we had a very complex uh, commission system uh, and it, it dealt in like tenths of a percent. Uh, uh, you know, you have all these different levels and tiers and you know, you had to look at this and look at that, and you know, so it was really kind of weird how we did it. Uh, but it was it was also very advantageous for the salesperson if they made their sales numbers. Uh, so you can nest that. We're not going to talk about that tonight. Uh, but I do want to do one more thing, though. Uh, I want to talk a little bit uh, about uh, our uh, function dialog box just a little bit. Uh, I'd like everybody to go up to. Uh, a blank cell. Let's go to uh, I1. Okay, I want everybody to come up to our uh, insert function thing up on our formula bar, that little F and X thing up on our formula bar. Okay. Okay, and in the, uh, in the uh, uh, description, just type the word if. Okay, and then go. And it brings it right up. Okay. I just want to demonstrate the power of, a, oh, I'm sorry, I'll highlight all that stuff right there. When, when actually it can, it can, it can, it can. Now, 
So now hit hit OK. I want oh no, 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 no. Oh, and then hit OK. okay. Uh, I, I say this because when I first started doing if statements, okay, I used this particular dialog box. It's a little bit easier uh, to do versus typing it out uh, in this 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 in the cell. Okay, uh, so it, it breaks it up into pieces uh, so that if our uh, the, you put in the logical test, which would be the, you know, B14 is greater than 500 would be the test, okay? Uh, and then you move it down to the next box and you put in, you know, what do you want to do if it's true? And you move down to the next box and what do you want to do if it's false? Okay, so using this particular dialog box, uh, it makes it a lot easier uh, to formulate if statements uh, if you're not used to doing them this way, or if you're not used to doing them, okay? Uh, it, it makes it a ton easier uh, to do it this way. If you're doing, well, what do I want to do? And if I'm doing that, what if it's true? And then what if it's false? Okay, so it's just walking you through uh, the whole little thing here. So uh, let's go ahead and hit a cancel, okay? Let's hit cancel, get out of there. Hit cancel. Okay, we're going to move over to uh, the next page, uh, which is page 142. Uh, we're going to be using the same workbook, but down on the bottom, we're going to go to the PMT uh, worksheet. Down on the bottom, there's a PMT worksheet. Okay. Uh, and we are going to use the PMT function, uh, and, but we're going to use it from the uh, function dialog box uh, uh, versus typing it in the cell. Uh, so we want to be in cell D4, which everybody should already be there. See down there at the bottom? Yep, that's PMT worksheet. And you should be in cell D4. Okay. Uh, so go up to your formula bar and uh, bring up your formula dialog box by clicking on the uh, FX thing there, insert function. And in the search for function box, type in the word PMT, PMT, and then hit go. PMT, and then go. Okay. Yeah, just type PMT and then go. Uh, and then when you the PMT is selected, uh, hit OK. And you should have a total of five different arguments uh, for this box. Okay. Uh, so now. Uh, here's the arguments that we're going to put uh, in the rate argument, okay, uh, which should be the first one. We are going to type C4 divided by 12. C4 and then that little slash uh, 12. Okay. Uh, in the in per box, so the next one down, we're going to type B4 times 12. B4 times 12. Okay. Now in the PV box, uh, we are going to type A4. Oops. Uh, we'll see how you are. Yeah. Is that so? No. Uh, you just want to uh, B4 times 12. Uh, now uh, put a comma after 12. Okay. And then type in A4. Okay, and then go ahead and okay. okay, so now, uh, and then uh, the the uh, the the next two boxes, the F, D, and the type. I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't tell you what the A4. I'm sorry, A4. Yes, A4. Okay. Uh, now the next two uh, we are going to leave blank. Okay. Uh, they are not being used in this particular function. Okay, uh, I am not an accountant, and I cannot tell you what those two arguments mean. I've never used them in all of my time ever using Excel. I've never used this particular function. I'm not an accountant, and I'm not a real estate person. So I just want to point that out. I teach it. I never use it. Okay. Uh, so now uh, we are going to press OK. 
Okay, and you'll notice that when we do, uh, oh, I'm sorry, you're, you're on the you should be down here. Okay. Uh, so now you'll notice that uh, if your if your worksheet is formatted correctly, uh, then it should be a red number indicating that it is a negative number. Okay, uh, because uh, it's a payment. Okay, uh, so Excel recognizes payments. Uh, as a negative number, okay? Most of the time when you are dealing with customers or you're dealing with somebody and you're, they're looking at a mortgage payment, they don't want to see it as a negative number, they want to see it as a number, okay? So uh, go back to, if you're not on cell D4, make sure you are, okay? Go up to your formula bar and in between the equal sign and the P of payment, a P of a PMT, Put in a negative sign. Okay, just that little dash. Before the P and after the equal sign. In D4? No, in your formula bar. Okay, right up here in your formula bar. Oh, no, cancel. Right up here between the equal sign and the P. Put in a negative sign. Between the equal sign and the P. should turn it positive now, okay? Uh, and again, you know, because most of the time when we're talking about this is a mortgage payment uh, formula or page, most of the time this would be a realtor or a bank person trying to explain to a customer, well, your mortgage payment is going to be this, okay? And most people don't like to see red numbers. It's just, it's just something we're kind of trained from little up Red is bad. Don't want to see it. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you should. There we go. Okay. So now we want to copy uh, the formula that's in, excuse me, uh, D4 uh, to D5 through D7. Okay. Uh, or six. I'm sorry. D5 to D6. D5 and D6. Uh, let me uh, let me catch up to you here. Um, uh, C4 divided by 12. Um, B4 times 12, and A4. Okay. And then again. And then negative. Right there. There we go. And again, we're just going to copy it down. Okay, so uh, what is this worksheet telling us? Well, uh, if I was a customer and I'm just looking here, uh, it's telling me that. I've got a loan, a $150,000 loan, and I'm looking at it at three different types of scenarios, right? I could do a 20-year loan at 7% interest. My payment would be $1,162.95. I could do a 20-year loan at 7.5% interest. Uh, it would be $1,208.39. Or I could do a 30-year loan at 7.5% interest, and it would be uh, $1,048.82. So go up to D4. Remember that little corner thing we just talked about. So select D4. Okay. That little corner thing. Okay. And just drag it right there. You go. Okay. Uh, again, so this is uh, this is some of the things that Excel can do for us. Um, you know, if you're thinking about buying a house, uh, this is a, a great opportunity. If I were to go in and change 
Uh, the interest rates, you know, obviously interest rates are not that high these days. Uh, you know, so if I were to go in and change the interest rate, uh, then now it's going to change the, the payment that I put in, right? Uh, if, and, and we can prove that by going to a cell uh, a C4, okay? Uh, and changing that to, uh, uh, let's see, uh, let's, let's, let's think of a good percentage rate right now. Uh, let's change that to uh, 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 three, okay? Uh, now, uh, if we change it to three and we press the enter button, uh, then uh, our, our, our sheet recalculates. Remember, every time we move the cell, it recalculates. Uh, now my payment is $831.90 based on a 20-year loan of $150,000 uh, at 3% interest rate. Okay? Uh, so There's no houses for $150,000. There aren't any. Okay? So now let's change A, uh, A4 uh, to uh, $250,000. A4 uh, to $250,000. Okay? Okay, so now uh, my, uh, uh, and again, to make sure that you enter that into the cell by pressing enter or, or the check mark or control enter or however you want to do that. Uh, so now my $250,000 loan for 20 years at 3% is $1,386.49. Okay. So you can see that this would be a pretty good tool uh, for, you know, if you're looking for a house or, uh, you know, uh, or anything really. I mean, it's 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 based on uh, you know the, the the standard accounting uh, you know practices. All we do is enter the information in. It spits out a number for us. Okay. Okay. Uh, so now let's change. Uh, uh, and, and we don't have to change anything. We're not going to save it uh, right away. I want to change over to uh, uh, the next one uh, for page one forty three. Okay. Uh, and uh, we're going to change our worksheet. This is a, a four-sheet worksheet. So we're going to choose the D sum uh, worksheet down at the bottom. Okay. Uh, so the D sum uh, excels database functions perform uh, calculations only for records that meet the criteria specified. All the database functions use the same basic syntax. It equals the function, the database field, and the criteria. Uh, these arguments or parts of a database function include uh, the database uh, in this if is the cell range that makes up the list of the database. A field uh, indicates which column is used in the function. Uh, refers to fields by their column labels as they are as long as they are enclosed with double quotation marks, such as uh, quotation mark name quotation mark. Uh, refers to fields as a number that represents the position of the column in the list. Uh, one for the first column in the list, two for the second, and so on. Uh, make sure to refer to their position in the list and not the column heading numbers. Uh, criteria is, the, is a reference to the cell or cell range that specifies the criteria for the function. Uh, so we're gonna be using the database function uh, by creating a formula with the simplest database function, the D sum function. So here we go. Uh, so we need to move to uh, C27, which is where we should be, okay? Uh, and uh, we're gonna go up to our uh, formula, insert formula in our little FX thing there, okay? And we're going to search for D sum, D S U M. And then press go. There's only one of them. Okay. No, that's okay. So that's okay. 
Once you have it there, hit OK. Okay. Hit OK. So hit OK. okay. So in our database, we're going to enter A1 colon I23. A1 colon I23. Which space is that? Because I'm still going to the database. Oh, that's okay. Hit cancel. Now, right there, type in do some. And get to go back. Now hit OK. It's almost like playing bingo. A1, I-23. Uh, and then in the field group, oh, no, yep, no, 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 no. Yep. And, and so, So now in our field, okay, uh, in the field box, so in our field, now it's really, really important that we use, whenever we're using text in an argument, that we surround the text with quotation marks, okay? So we're going to put quotation mark. And then the words annual trips, capitalize both words, annual trips, so capital A N N U A L space, capital T R I P S, and then no, no it's gonna be capital and lowercase. No, no, our capital A, N N U A L space, capital T R I P S, and then close the quotation marks. Close them. Okay. Yeah, quotation marks. And then in criteria, we're going to put in C twenty five colon C twenty six. C25, hold on, C26, and then hit OK. And you should have the number 42. There. Okay. Okay, so what is this telling us? Okay, well, let me, uh, let me, uh, let me get there for just a second. Uh, A1, colon. I twenty three. Okay, forty two. Okay, so 
what it's saying here is for for in this in this thing here, okay, they're looking at the the annual trips, okay? Uh, any of them that in purpose that has the word business in it, okay? Uh, then they're going to count the number that's in annual trips. Okay, it's going to add up all those numbers together. Okay, so now in C26, go to C26. I don't have that number yet. I've got an error. You've got an error. It's not a problem. Let me come over and see what's going on. Now go to C26 and type in the word other. O T H E R. C26. It currently says business. It currently says business. I would like it to say other. Notice that when we hit the enter button, the number 42 changes to the number 17. change C26 to pleasure, it would do the same thing. It would change the number based on how many trips were taken for pleasure instead of business or other. Okay? So let's see what that number is. If we change the purpose from other to pleasure, there's 19 uh, business trips for pleasure. So again, a very powerful tool. Okay, uh, if this is, if these are some of the things that you're dealing with, uh, you can go through and you can say, okay, this is my database. This is what I'm looking for. Uh, this is what I want to add up, uh, and and you can set up your criteria. Uh, to we could have changed our criteria uh, that instead of uh, instead of purpose, uh, we could have changed it to annual cost of tickets. Uh, but we're not going to do that right now. It, it would have added up the, the, the money instead of the number. Okay. Uh, so again, a very powerful tool, uh, depending upon how we use it. Okay. Uh, let's go over to uh, 144. Uh, I want to talk about this. Uh, I don't really want to go into it though. Okay. Uh, this is probably one of the most confusing functions that there ever was in and it took me years to truly understand this particular function. It's called VLOOKUP, okay? Uh, and it's, it's all about, uh, you know, finding a value that you want to look up in a range of cells that you want to look in, in a certain column in that, in that range of cells. And, and, and it sounds easy, and it's nightmarish when it comes into using it, okay? Uh, one of the most powerful uh, tools that is in Excel, again, one of the most confusing on how to do it. We'll go over this in our advanced class. I'm uh, not going to go over it in our, in our basic class, just to know that there is, in fact, one out there. I'm not going to go into it. I, I'd like to change over to uh, uh, page 145. I just want to read this real quick for you. Uh, functions are one of the major changes in Excel 2013. Uh, many of the functions have been renamed to better reflect their usage. 
or a place with your function that is more accurate. The descriptions for the functions themselves are also clearer, so it is easier to understand how a function is to be used. So if those of you who have Excel 2010, uh, some of these functions are not going to be the same uh, as they are in 2013. Back in the beginning of this chapter, they had some new and uh, name changed functions uh, between 2010 and 2013. There are also some user defined functions. If add ins installed contain functions, those add ins would be available. Uh, compatibility functions, all the functions in this category have been replaced or renamed, but they are still available for backward compatibility. Consider using the new functions instead of, instead of these because they may not be available in future versions of Excel. Tables describing the rest of the function categories along with more detailed explanation of the function in each category appear in the following pages. Okay, so uh, when we start now, pages 146 uh, through uh, page uh, 157 uh, are a list of functions uh, based on category uh, in the uh, in the uh, in Excel 2013. So I'd like everybody to page turn to page 154. Believe it or not, you can do. There are functions for dealing with text. Okay, uh, and and one of those is uh, concatenate, uh, and it joins uh, strings together uh, so that you can you know have uh, different words and different cells, and then you can make it one big long string of cell or string of words. Uh, you can uh, take parts of words uh, out uh, and into uh, uh, things. So if I had uh, uh, if I had a bunch of names and I wanted to create an email address as an example, uh, and my email address for the companies were the first initial and the last name of the person. Uh, maybe followed by uh, at company xyz.com, okay? uh, then I could take, uh, I could use the, uh, the, the right character, or excuse me, left function uh, and say, uh, give me the leftmost uh, character from the cell that contains the first name, which would be the first letter of his name, right? Okay? So I could, I could tell Excel uh, to take the first initial uh, and then I could use the concatenate feature to put them together so that the first name and the last name were together. Uh, and then I could use the lower function to make it all lowercase, uh, which is what we use to make email addresses with. Okay? Uh, so there's a lot of stuff that you can use for functions for text uh, in Excel. It's not, uh, everybody says, oh, well, Excel is all about numbers. And yes, I will agree. It's mostly about numbers, but there's a lot of stuff you can do with text also. Okay, so that kind of wraps up our uh, discussion for uh, formulas uh, for tonight. Uh, excuse me. And we also talked about working with ranges. We talked about names and how to define names. Uh, we talked about uh, how to use different functions like if and payment. Uh, sum, desum for database summing. Uh, we, we, ta we talked about how there are a lot more functions out there. Uh, really the only way that you're going to learn functions if you're using Excel is to uh, find a, a quiet time and start practicing uh, the different functions that are in Excel. Uh, that's how I learned them. Uh, there, a good example is there's a, uh, a way to count uh, for those of you who have lists of things, like lists of customers, uh, there's a way to count uh, empty cells or full cells. Uh, there's an there's a equals count uh, uh, function and there's an equals count A function that counts empty cells. Uh, so if you have a list of customers and maybe somebody who's putting in information uh, missed the last name or uh, you know, uh, something like this, then you could count the number of blank cells in that list uh, and determine how many people don't have last names. Okay? Uh, that's a, a useful function uh, that, uh, that is in Excel. Uh, so a lot again, a lot of different functions that we talked about and how to put in a formula uh, into Excel. Remember, all formulas 
regardless of what they're doing, starts with an equal sign. So that tells Excel, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something, either math, or I'm going to do some function, uh, or I'm going to do some formula. It has to start with that equal sign. Uh, so next week, or next time, uh, which by the way is our next to last day, we're going to talk about tables. Okay, uh, What is a table? Okay, uh, And uh, how do we make a table? Uh, what are the advantages of a table instead of just a list of something with labels on top? Uh, and uh, uh, then we're also going to talk about customizing uh, Excel. Okay, uh, And uh, when I say customizing Excel, uh, how do we make the ribbon more user-friendly for me? Okay, uh, One of the biggest things in 2013 and 2016, it, and even, even carries on to, into the Windows 10 operating system, it's all about personalization. Okay? It's all about allowing you, the user, uh, to change things uh, that make it your program and what's good for you, not necessarily what comes out of the box. Okay? Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about next week. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, next week. Uh, next Wednesday. Next Monday. Time flies when you're having fun, folks. I tell you. Uh, I, I kind of get lost sometimes when I'm when I'm teaching because I got I have Android class on Monday or Tuesday and Thursday.